Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today I wanted to share with you an interview that I had with Michael Glenn Easter, who wrote that piece on Greg Glassman in the 30th anniversary Men's Health Edition that just came out a couple weeks ago. If you didn't catch the piece, you can find the link to it down below in the description, but man, is it incredible. I strongly suggest you guys check it out. It's a really interesting profile piece on Greg Glassman and sort of the change that CrossFit is going through right now. And Michael Easter, uh, he did a great job writing the piece. Uh, I, I found it to be really fascinating. I think his take on things was really interesting. Anyway, take a look at the interview. It's kind of a long form deal, but I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. And let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you guys next time. I guess I guess my first, the first question that I have is, you know, before we see this end product of like this article about Greg Glassman and CrossFit, there's probably a, a process or multiple processes that lead to that happening. So like, how did you even, you know, get involved in writing this piece? Yeah, sure. So my background is uh, I teach at UNLV now, uh, journalism, but before that, for about a decade, I was on staff at Men's Health Magazine. So now that I've sort of moved on to teaching, I'm also still writing a lot. So I've kind of become like a de facto writer for, for Men's Health. And so those guys in the office, they sort of plan out uh, the issues and then they'll just say, here's what you're writing this month. Um, so Men's Health had had this 30th anniversary issue. And within that, they were kind of trying to wrap their minds around like, who are the most influential people in the spheres that we cover? Um, who have the most influential people been over the last 30 years? So within that, Glassman is obviously a natural fit. If you don't include Greg Glassman, you're just like missing the boat on this, right? Your, your eyes haven't been open. Um, and to that end, like we thought he was so, uh, he's been so influential that we wanted to give him sort of a, a, a lot more space. So I basically just got an email from my editor that's like, hey, do you want to write about Glassman for the 30th anniversary issue? And I think the reason um, they went with me is because it, it's interesting. I feel like in journalism, specifically with like fitness and health, people like journalists are supposed to be objective, right? But there's always like this weird, like the weirdness around CrossFit. Like I'm sure you guys in your community have seen some online articles where you're just like, okay, you know? Um, and so when I was on staff at the magazine, I was always like the guy that was like, I didn't do CrossFit regularly, but I was like, you guys are jackasses to say that like CrossFit is bad. Like we're talking about exercise here, you know? Um, so I was always kind of like pro CrossFit in the sense that I wasn't saying CrossFit is bad or anything like that. So they went with me because I think they thought I could maybe be a little bit more fair. Um, so I got the assignment. And then from there, like my process is like, I just have to start researching. So the, the whole point is like, how has Greg, like what are sort of the origins of CrossFit and what effect has he had on our readers, whether or not they know it. So you maybe don't even, you've never been to a CrossFit box. But if you've worked out in the last 30 years, I guarantee that Greg's thinking has somehow influenced your workout, right? So if you've ever been to like a big box gym and done something like a, an AMRAP, right? That's like very much became popular because of CrossFit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm essentially just trying to like look for evidence that suggests that. And I'm talking to like, I just start a mass email. Um, we first had to email the uh, CrossFit people because like I said like journalists are not always particularly fair with CrossFit so <laughs> naturally CrossFit HQ can be a little I would say cagey sometimes with with journalists and rightly so right so I emailed Russ Green in HQ and was like hey man here's kind of what we're thinking and he was like he sends me back this long email okay fine but I suggest you talk to these people for a fair article and I, you know, I kind of looked at the sources and I'm like, yeah, like they're, they're all legit people. These are like researchers, et cetera. Um, so he was super helpful with like putting me in touch with the right people. And then from there, it's just like calling a lot of people early on. And then I went to the uh, medical one at the ranch where Greg was. So spending a little bit of time with, with Greg and sort of seeing what he's doing with CrossFit Health, like being on the ground there was super informative about sort of the direction that he's taking CrossFit in. 
and also because it's a profile, like to give a sense of who he is, which is like, <laughs> as, a, as a journalist, that dude is like the ultimate person to have as a subject because like so many people get around to journalists and they totally change. They're like, oh, I need to come off a certain way. And, uh, you know, Greg, he's going to be who he is, whether you're a journalist from Men's Health, whether like, you know, he's talking in front of a classroom at Harvard, whether he's on 60 Minutes, like he just, he just is who he is. And that's just like, that's what made it really cool. Yeah. Uh, was that the, was that the one that was just earlier this month, just a, a few weeks ago? Or were you at one that's separately different yeah. than that? Um, when was it? It was in September. I believe, like the end of September. So I think it might have been the one right before the one this this past. Yeah, I think it was the fourth or fifth one. I went I went out there uh, I went out there the first weekend of this month actually, and and kind of had a similar experience. Uh, you know, we we were there for at HQ for the weekend. They had a bunch of talks and stuff, and oh. then uh, we went over to the ranch to see the the back half of of the MDL one and. You know, he spoke and it was a lot of the same stuff that, you know, he, he gave you like quotes on in, in the that you were, you were quoting in that piece. Yeah. Uh, but I, I find it interesting, you know, as, as someone I've been in the CrossFit space for a long time. And in my experience, you're pretty accurate in saying that journalists uh, and, you know, sort of generally the health sciences media hasn't really been that uh, gentle with CrossFit. A lot of that has to do with like CrossFit themselves kind of coming at everybody with like just the like double birds in the air for, for, you know, like, you know, the entire establishment. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's interesting, you know, this piece sort of highlights both the, you know, eccentric nature of Greg Glassman and also his sort of like adversarial you know, motivations, like he needs someone to be butting heads with in order to really be at his, at his best. And, uh, you know, you were able to kind of really point out that right now the adversary that he's focusing on is like the entirety of the healthcare industry. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think you're right in saying he needs an adversary. And I think I included a quote in there, um, from, I forget who, one of the guys at HQ, who basically we were at like this party at Greg's house after, and Greg's just kind of like walking around, like, you know, having these deep conversations about like big sugar and stuff. And this guy pointed out, he's like, look, like Greg is a fighter. The dude loves to fight. He's like, but that's kind of who you need in a situation where you're like trying to go up against the health system. Um, and yeah, he is, he definitely seems to be sort of tipping CrossFit to a more, um, more, I guess, making sure that the average person knows that it's something they can do. So the sense that I got from him is maybe he felt like, and I think probably accurately, like the average person who's not, hasn't been exposed to a lot of the fitness world thinks that CrossFit is only for people who are trying to go to the games or it, it always has to be this super extreme thing. And he's trying to enlighten people to the fact that, you know, everything is scalable and once you do that, CrossFit has all these elements that people need to basically thrive, you know, and that's something that's incredibly needed with just how unfit, out of shape, unhealthy uh, Americans have become, unfortunately. So. Yeah, you know, I, I liked a, a couple of the parts of your, your article I thought were really insightful because you, you spoke about some of the sort of like secondary parts of CrossFit that make it so successful, like the community, the social aspect of it, you know, the, the, the very basic general idea of like fitness in a hundred words, nutrition, you know, in, in, in included in that. Um, I wonder though, like I've talked about the CrossFit health initiative, a bunch on, on my channels and, you know, I, I get mixed feedback. You know, I get a lot of people who are both sort of interested and excited about what it could potentially mean but at the same time there's a lot of like hey man we're doctors like we went through training how dare you think you could train us better than what we already are like what's the feedback that you've gotten in an article like this that essentially calls out the entire health system um for, for kind of failing a little bit yeah you know i think it's um it's a little bit tricky but you know in the in the piece i pointed out like Doctors don't really receive that much nutrition training at all. They don't receive anything on exercise. Yet, 
if you're trying to prevent a disease rather than treat it, you prevent it by not eating like a jerk and exercising, right? So I think that, um, I think it can be scary for someone who's gone through, you know, 18 years of school more or less and is an expert in their field to think that, oh, maybe I, you know, be basically told that I can't do it, you know? They've heard about it. Maybe they saw it on the games on ESPN. They're just like the average person where they think it's like this crazy extreme thing. And there's also a lot of old thinking, you know, in terms of like old people shouldn't squat and things like that. Some sort of things that have been flipped around. But yeah, I think any time that, you know, especially with the way Greg delivers, right? Uh, there's that. There's going to be a little bit of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Like I, I, I definitely think that the ball is rolling downhill towards like how can we get our patients to think more preventatively, and things like CrossFit will be very important in that. You know, it's obviously not the only thing, um, but I do think it has a lot of things going for it. Specifically, like you brought up the community aspect. So there's this, the guy at Harvard Divinity School has has studied it and he didn't basically he started with this question how are people gathering today because you know there's been generally like a, a downfall in organized religion meaning just less people are you know going to church more or less so like where are people going now to find this sense of community and transformation and he ended up finding that crossfit just through a bunch of surveys crossfit was where people were going and they were getting like all these elements that you find that sort of can help with the sustainability aspect, I think, of eating better and moving more, you know, um, which you don't get from, you know, something like just going to Globo Gym. I mean, sure, some people can do that, and that's great, but there's going to be some people that need that little extra bit to keep them coming back, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, you know, anytime someone asks me, uh, like I said, I've been I've been doing I've been doing CrossFit for a long time, uh, yeah. ten years actually at this point. And, uh, my brother and I owned a CrossFit gym for like four or five of those years, so I've been in it for a long time. Um, and a lot of people always ask me about the the whole gym business or or why they should be joining a gym, and uh, or like how expensive CrossFit is. That's a really common thing that I'm, I'm getting all the time and. I've been telling them the same thing for the past 10 years, which is basically that CrossFit's free. Like you can go on la- online and find their training and find their methods and find their ideas and, you know, learn them and you can learn how to do basically every movement watching like a YouTube channel. Like you can train in your gym as like a complete rookie and novice, you know, what you're getting when you're joining the gym uh, physically is that social aspect, right? You're getting a group of people that are going to hold you accountable for the changes that you're trying to make in your life. Um, so I've always found that to be a fascinating aspect of, of what it is that makes this thing so successful uh, on like a mass scale. Like people just identify with that um, in a way I think that that I don't know if it was on purpose or what, but but it taps into some sort of part of our brains that I think a lot of things are, are not tapping into these days. Yeah, exactly. And part of the feedback that I would get from my editors is like, well, you have to figure out a way to address this idea that, you know, people say that it's a cult. And so the question becomes, well, why is it a cult, right? It, not, I'm not saying it's a cult in that, but I'm saying, like, why could it be framed as that? It's because, like, it really does get people on board with it, right? And it excites people. It gets people, like, super just jazz, Like, they want to be a part of something bigger, I think. And that's what the box can do. Yeah. The um, As someone who, like, kind of dips into CrossFit training yourself, you know, I... I I wonder, would you describe yourself as someone who's like totally drank the Kool-Aid and is in 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 too deep, like way over your head type style? With CrossFit specifically? Yeah. Um, I would say uh, probably not. I try and like be down the middle, but like, look, I think that CrossFit is like if someone just came and asked me like, look, I'm trying to get in shape. What's something I should look into? I would say go with CrossFit too, you know, um, because you're going to get good instruction. Um, you're going to learn movements that you need to do. You're going to get like some words about nutrition, you know, uh, and you're going to get that community aspect. So like for me, um, we were kind of emailing about this before, but you know, I don't, I don't go to a box regularly. I've been to like, you know, I've had to, I've ended up in boxes because of my line of work and stuff. 
but I do follow like the programming online now. And um, I mean, I think it's just got a lot going for it. And I think that more people are beginning to realize that where before it was kind of like this, this little group of people who were just like, so into it. Right. And now it's kind of like people are starting to realize, Oh, it's not, it's not a cult. It's just like this really interesting way to look at fitness and as a lifestyle almost. Yeah. And you, you got to interact with, uh, um, you know, you got to interact with, with some of the head people at, at HQ. Like, you know, I think you spoke with Pat Sherwood. Yeah. Uh, you know, you talked to a bunch of those guys. You obviously talked to Greg and, and Castro and, and that whole crew. You know, is it is it as like an outsider to that world um, and not necessarily having sort of seen a lot of the, the you know, ways that CrossFit has has behaved internally, is it strange to you that they're, they're even successful as like this gigantic international business when it's kind of run like the Hell's Angels? Right. That's a good question. I haven't, I haven't really thought of that. So one guy I interviewed for this piece is a, uh, he's a business professor at Harvard business school and he'll have Greg come in and talk. And he's like, if you just look at this, like what Greg does on paper, you're, it's just antithetical to everything that we teach, but he somehow figured out a way to make it work. And I think that that's because he, the way that the, the, the guy I talked to put it, the business professor, he was like, Greg doesn't really care about money. Like he just, like when your decisions are not made with a financial end in mind, like it'll, is it'll, it's allowed him to sort of go for providing the best product possible. And I think that's what uh, people are getting. Um, and you know, you mentioned the Hells Angels thing, like early in my career when I would write about CrossFit, I would, you know, I would say things that like, I would get emails from, I don't know, the Russes or someone about, and they would be like, and I mean, they do have a very, it's not like, hey man, um, this was, we noticed that this was slightly incorrect. We're wondering, <laughs> hey, please take the time to change it. They're like, please change this now. If you do not change it in this amount of time, we will be forced to do this. And you're just like, Jesus, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would read it and you're like, well, God damn it, the right, you know. <laughs> but it was always like you'd write it like right before you'd publish an article that mentioned the word CrossFit, you're like, well, can't wait to get an email from one of the Russes on this, you know. Um, and they would they wouldn't always come, but you know, and when they did, they were usually right, you know. So um, it's good. I think it's good that they try to protect the brand. Um, sometimes their protection of it can be uh very a uh, very muscular protection i guess i would say but i don't know man. like i don't know it's weird you know like the going back to the quote greg likes to fight and people are like well he's so litigious he's gotten on all these lawsuits it's like but if you look at how they've all turned out he's always won so i don't think he's necessarily seeking out like lawsuits but when things are things are wrong, he's not afraid to basically call people on him and bring it into a court to just get it, just get it through, you know? Yeah. I think that's a, that's a, that's a good observation because honestly, it's strange that, uh, it, 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 it is strange how often they're on point with what they're trying to fix, you know, like, and, and how they go about it is a little, uh, brash sometimes like you know they definitely like to dunk on people as you're pretty aggressively Good way to uh, but they also tend to be pretty on pretty on point about what it is they're trying to fix and why they're trying to fix it and i think that might be the saltiest part of the whole thing because you kind of get like because i've been on the receiving end of that as well you get like an email and they're like x y and z and also fuck you and it's like wait that sucks. Like, you're right. I'm totally wrong in this. And I should have fixed this to begin with. But why do you have to be such a dick about it? Um, and, and I just don't. That's just a corporate culture and a voice that doesn't exist anywhere else, especially in a business as, as large uh, and uh, growing as quickly as, as CrossFit's is. So, uh, yeah, I was just I was very curious to see what your what your thought was on, on just how, how strange their their structure is and how strange their, you know, their branding is. Yeah, uh, it's very, um, 
it's interesting because I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I found most people to be, um, it was a mix. Like some people were super warm, like, Hey man, Hey, glad you're here. And some people are like, Hey, you know, um, but I didn't get the sense that I was unwelcome. I think that I did get the sense that some people were like a little bit worried because they have had bad interactions with journalists before. And so that's fair. That's how I would be. You know, if every time a journalist wrote a story about me, it was like there was inaccuracies and it maybe didn't portray me that fairly, I'd probably be like, oh, well, I'm a little bit worried that there's a journalist coming in here, you know. Um, but, you know, and it's interesting. So after the story, it's kind of going off on another tangent. Greg texted me and he was basically saying it's like, you know, he loved the article. It's one of like it's one that he, he really enjoyed out of all the articles that have been about CrossFit. And so as a journalist, that made me go, well, wait, like you don't always want the source to be perfectly happy with a profile of them because then it raises questions of like, did you, were you honest about them or did it come off as more like this guy's the best, you know, and almost like an advertisement. Um, so I kind of had to grapple with that for a while, but I kind of came to the conclusion. I was like, you know what? I think I wrote the most fair story possible. And Greg's text was more a reaction to like, Hey, this is like finally a fair piece. I mean, that's kind of what I think now I could be wrong. Cause you know, I'm obviously not getting in Greg's head, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Yeah, actually that, that was, I, I wanted to have that as kind of my last question, which is this like, you know, idea of how do you balance telling a story that you agree with generally speaking with sort of not coming across as like a shill you know and i i like i said before i enjoyed reading your piece um you know russ was kind enough to actually provide me with a with a copy of it the day before it went to publication and um i'd read it then i read it once it published i read it again when you sent me another copy uh, and I, I liked the, the aspects, like the, the perspectives that you took on it. And I liked a lot of the things that you talked about were things that generally speaking have not really been spoken about when it comes to CrossFit. There's people just ignore it and focus on what's flashy, like CrossFit's going to kill you or like, you know, CrossFit is a cult or, you know, and I, I, the, the nuances that you were able to get in there, I think were, were important. Um, did you have like, parts of this article uh written out that you had to cut which you felt were either like you know maybe would have swayed that perception or did you have like a piece on you know that may have been a little bit more negative or biting or a piece that were maybe just a little too positive or, or you know too in line um that had to get edited out yeah i'm trying to think in terms of something that came up um so like some of the editors wanted me to talk about Rob Doe and sort of like bring that up because I think, you know, a lot of the editors are, are reading this, um, having not like done as much research and they're like, well, CrossFit, you know, it causes Rob Doe. So we definitely have to talk about that. And so sort of navigating that was interesting because I'm like, well, you know, a lot of things can, can do that. And I think that maybe, you know, I, I think I had a line in there that was, you know, Greg had openly talked about, yeah, CrossFit can kill you. But then it was followed by, which is, you know, more provocative than prescriptive. And I think there was potentially like a, a mindset early on in CrossFit, like we're trying to provoke people, you know. Um, and so sort of balancing that was tricky to make sure that it didn't come off as cross. Like I didn't want to basically be saying either CrossFit can cause Rob Doe, CrossFit doesn't cro cause Rob Doe, because I think it's it's more like, Look, there's a lot of ways that you can hurt yourself with exercise, right? And yes, CrossFit has sort of early on embraced this mentality of, you know, uh, sort of provoking people, but trying to figure out like, okay, well, where are they taking it now? I think was sort of the important part of the piece and like trying to capture how they've seen themselves uh, too was important. Now, whether or not I accomplished that, I don't know, but um it, it is kind of tricky when you're dealing with something controversial you know sure, sure. i don't yeah. know if i answered your question but no that, that makes sense you know it's a, it's a fine line it's a tough it's a tough place to to find yourself um professionally in in that line of work and, and you know like you've I, I was going through some of the other stuff that you've read uh you've written and uh i saw you you wrote about 
you know, Jim Jones, you know, and, and that is its own sort of like, you know, at least back then it was very much in your face, you know, pushing buttons. You're not good enough to hang with us. Like you can't squat with us unless you're elite type thing. Um, you know, so I, I think obviously from it, it, it's just, I think it's good that you were selected to write this piece because it's very easy to get caught up in what CrossFit has been or has been interpreted as and not sort of see where it's trying to go and what it's trying to do, which is honestly crazy. Like it, it is insane to think that this like private company is going to try and completely revolutionize like the healthcare, healthcare industry. Um, but you know, I, I guess that's, that's what they've always been about. These kind of like giant, crazy, um, aspirational goals. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know if there, is there anything that you want people to get out of this piece, uh, that maybe hasn't been, that hasn't been picked up on? Good question. I don't know. I, I, um, it's funny cause you know, I've worked in covered fitness for so long. So you've, I've heard so many different, uh, you know, opinions on CrossFit from people, you know, experts within the industry. And, um, you know, early on, it was like people, fitness people generally had a negative viewpoint, but slowly over time, I'm starting to see that change, you know, where it's like even people who are, say, more in the perform better crowd, they're even being like, oh, CrossFit's good. Whereas, say, like, you know, five, 10 years ago, they're like, oh, it's idiotic. The programming is shitty. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, okay, you know, and now they're starting to realize sort of the benefit of it. And I think even CrossFit has highlighted some of the limitations within that kind of what they do too, you know. And so I think it's, you know, it's, I don't mean that to imply like CrossFit is so much better than perform better or, or just traditional ways of doing things. I just mean that, you know, CrossFit is becoming uh, I think less of a quote unquote outsider within the sort of established fitness world. Um, and the more establishment has learned a lot from CrossFit and probably a little bit of vice versa, you know? Um, but I think that, you know, overall, like all the people I talked to who were not um, in the CrossFit world, but trainers or physiologists or whatever, they all had good things to say. And I'm talking, and I mean, even like people who are doing, um, you know, who publish in the NSCA, which CrossFit has had their battles with. Yeah. So they're kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's a good, uh, good thing to end on, but, but yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I dig it. I appreciate your time, Michael. I, I, I do. I, I can't wait to see, I don't know what your next project or what your next article is going to be on, but uh, you know, I, I enjoyed reading your, your writing. So, I'm sure whatever the topic is, I'll, I'll probably be a fan of it. Where can uh, where can people find you if they're trying to, you know, see what you got going on? So I got a, you can go on my website, eastermichael.com, and there's some other stuff you can read there. And then, you know, I'm on all the social stuff like Instagram and uh, Twitter at Michael underscore Easter. So, and you can email me. It's michael.glenn.easter if anyone has questions or wants to tell me they read the piece and they vehemently disagree with it <laughs> i'm up for entertaining those emails too so what was what was your email email address again so it's michael m-i-c-j-e-l dot glenn g-l-e-n-n dot easter and it's at gmail .com. there, we go. Yeah. there yeah. we go awesome well very cool thank you michael i appreciate your time man hey thanks a lot man i appreciate it yeah of course take care Thank you.